Hello everybody and welcome to Los Comics TV. I'm your host, Javier Hernandez. So, um, what do we got here? We got some really cool stuff. This is a box, slipcase box set of uh, some hardcover books. So, really quick, uh, this is the book here, Dicko Unleashed. It's a huge 300, almost 400 page uh, catalog of an art exhibit uh, dedicated to Steve Ditko that ran in uh, Spain uh, between September 2016 to January 2017. And um, IDW, I guess, partnered up with the uh, this other publisher and um, they put together this exhibit catalog, all the great art that was in the uh, show. And, and of course, some historical text, uh, a lot of text on history of Ditko from his very beginnings all the way through to his latest work at the time, which was the stuff he was doing in 2016. So I bought this, like tons of other people, and um, there was a slipcase edition available at the time, and the way I remember it, it was, I guess it was sold out, because I'm pretty sure I would have bought it back then, and it was just something like, okay, it's sold out, you know, understandably, it's a beautiful set, you know, now it's going to be on the uh, second hand market and the price will be crazy so forget about it and then uh recently i just saw that somebody posted it on ebay um one of these sets and, you know it was like 200 dollars, and i thought about it overnight you know let me let me think about it and then the next morning i checked it was gone like ah somebody bought it so i just happened to let me look up um dicko unleashed slipcase idw whatever and it uh, i got a link to IDW's website there they have a shop and then I noticed wait they got the book there again or like again maybe it was always there I don't want to you know speak factually wrong but I was pretty sure it was sold out or whatever anyway whatever it was in the shop and I go oh, I'm getting it because it was just a regular price um you know it's still a pricey book 120 bucks but that's what the I believe that's what the price always was so for a book that's like what five years old a collectible book so anyway the design motif is, uh, if you're familiar with Steve Dickel's work, uh, this is a beautiful black and white card or uh, design simulating the card that Mr. A, Dickel's signature character, uh, tosses out at people he's chasing down and they'll, they'll catch the card and most likely it always turns black because he's pretty sure that they're bad. Um, anyway, so this is such a great, you know, I haven't seen the motif done before in a book or like in a design outside of Dicko's work, which is kind of interesting. So good for these folks to uh, go, you know what? We got to go black and white. So anyway, I took it out. There's the two books out. So the reason I bought it, because it's a beautiful slipcase. Um, so here's the Dicko Unleashed book in the same motif. But here's the thing that I really wanted was this uh, checklist. So really quick, because I haven't reviewed... Ditko Unleashed on my site before. Let's uh, take a look at it, right? Let's take a look at some of the uh, 375 pages. Um, it's a very high quality paper and, you know, the hardcover, beautiful book. And this is the first edition. So, like, yeah, I, I was able to get a first edition even though I just bought it earlier this week. Um, it, it, this has an introduction by Robin Snyder. Who's uh, been Steve Dicko's like long time friend, collaborator, and publisher? Uh, probably the last thirty years, maybe thirty five, but at least thirty. Um, all the work Dicko's been putting out um, since the eighties through his, you know, his own work. Otherwise, he's still been working for other companies. But um, so, what do we, what do we got? Uh, you know, there's Steve in the high school, high school pictures. A couple more here. Um, so it's, yeah, it's got autobiographical info and tons of art, you know, and then it's, it's broken kind of down through eras or years. So 50, his earliest work, I think it was 53 or 54, 54, 57. And, uh, so the book is in English every time you see two columns. So it's in Spanish, obviously, cause, uh, this was an exhibit in Spain, but it's obviously, obviously got the en English translation. So on every page, um, which is great. I mean, I could, I could probably try to make my way through the Spanish, but because it's very, it's not so much conversational. It's you know all this technical information and 
stuff like that. It would have taken me forever to read it, honestly, if I ever did get through it. So I'm glad it's in English, and I'm so so many other fans are as well. But um, like I said, I'm gonna go through this like super quick. I mean, it's a beautiful book. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of images of Steve's work. Um, yeah, now we're hitting 62. Yeah, this, uh, the Marvel years, Spider-Man. Um, yeah, nice reproductions of the original artwork to Amazing Fantasy 15, which you may know was turned into, someone donated it to the, uh, it was the Library of Congress, Smithsonian, uh, Smithsonian Museum. Um, anyway, regardless, no one knows who it is and they don't, they don't release the information. Um, I think it's already been there 10 years. So, astoundingly, this artwork, you know, the very first appearance of Spider-Man, was in somebody's possession. Um, and the person, the group, whatever, donated it to the museum. Which is great, right? Because now it's part of the museum, permanently. So, I guess you can make an appointment to go and see it. Um, but anyway, so, this has been, this is the original art. Um... It's been reprinted a lot since it was, you know, that artwork was donated. But um, just some of the pages. And again, just samples of the actual comic work panels from the comics, original art, and all this very good informative text. This is great because, like I said, it's an extensive, it's literally going through almost every year of his life, um, especially professional life. So... A lot of great examples. I imagine some of this art, I'm thinking, was probably in the show, in that exhibit. Um, having not traveled over there, I'm not sure, but I would I would think so. Um, man, the idea of the idea of all this art up on this on walls, like boy, I sure hope that was secure. Um, I had seen these pages. I think this is a story at the Cartoon Art Museum in San Francisco. Oh, I don't know now. Maybe, geez, when did the first Spider-Man film come out? 2002? They had an exhibit there, uh, Cartoon Art Museum, of uh, Steve Ditko work. Um, and there was Spider-Man, again, Green Goblin, and the Crime Master. So I don't remember if they appeared in other issues, but I think this was I think this was it. I think they had the whole, all the pages, you know, or somebody at least loaned it to the museum. Um, so here they are again. But anyway, yeah, like I said, sorry for rushing through. I don't want to make this a super long video. Um, some of you obviously have this book. Um, and you get this cool little... What do you call these things? Anyway, these little tags. Save your, save your spot. And of course, they're black and white. Um, Charlton work. Oh, yeah, they got it, you know. Thankfully, someone's got these... Uh, his ink wash work from the late 60s he did for Warren Magazine for uh, Creepy and Eerie. Um, ink wash technique is basically you have black ink and then you dilute it with water. So the more water you add, you get a lighter shade of gray, right? So that's why you get these beautiful shades. I think it's coming up a little bit on the camera. I mean, I can't imagine seeing these things in person. But I really need effects, right? This white... Uh, specter here and i mean just the shadowing and everything it's fantastic i mean couple that with just dicko's stunningly imaginative uh work the way he layers things and shapes and shadows i mean wow just white silhouette and black silhouette a gray silhouette um yeah this stuff is astounding there is a nice collection of the creepy and eerie work uh dark horse put one out a hardcover collection um, I don't know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So I think you can still find that reasonably, you know, inexpensive. So anyway, um, yeah, look at this stuff. I mean, this is a stunning book. This is one of the most stunning Dicko books that's ever been put together as far as retrospective of his work. Um, it's definitely heavy on art. But again, this is very helpful, just giving you a history. And then he goes to this company, that company, um, Talks about some of his techniques and such, and themes. Um, the Creeper. Uh, a lot of the stuff he did for fanzines. I heard he was very pissed off when the the, the young zine publisher printed this Mr. A on pink paper. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's this book. A lot of samples, Mr. A. 
A lot of, now we're getting more of his black and white independent work. Um, and then Charlton Comics. Uh, this will be his run during the 70s. Worked for that company for quite quite a couple of, quite a few decades. Um, but yeah, this is a stunning book. That's a great Tomb of Dracula story in uh, Tomb of Dracula magazine. I'd really recommend tracking that down. Uh, let's see, could I tell you what issue that is? I get a, uh, da, 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 da. Well, just look up online, Steve Dicko, Tomb of Dracula. Uh, looks like it's number two. Yeah. This, now, it's the Tomb of Dracula magazine. Uh, Tomb of Dracula number two, Marvel, 1979. The Dimensional Man. Um, yeah, it's a Dracula story in Wash. I really recommend that you pick that up. So, Tomb of Dracula number two, magazine, 1979. Um, a lot of his work is available, you know, it, uh, relatively inexpensive. You know, like they, they say, go back issue, back issue bin diving. Um, obviously, you get to the older stuff, you know, your Spider-Mans and your Charlton work. I mean, some of that can get very expensive. Um... And there's, there's so many book collections. I, I want to say, I don't know, 80% of his work might be in uh, collections, maybe 75, or at least half. I mean, all that Marvel DC stuff he's done. But anyway, so yeah, this is just a reprint. Pretty much an exact reprint of the original edition of this book. Yeah, then getting to his, his uh, more modern stuff, uh, Blake Bell's uh, biography, The World of Steve Dicko. That was probably about the, yeah, I gotta say that's about the first... Um, Big Dicko book out there that came out. Uh, what year is this? 2008, I think. And there we go. Yeah, all the current, you know, the modern stuff he did. Uh, through Robin Snyder. The, the 32 series, they call it. Because each of these books was 32 pages. All new material. Number 15, 16, 17, 19, 20. Um, I think the last thing he did was issue 26, I think. And then well, he passed away. He passed away in 2018. Um, anyway, so that's this book. Again, very beautiful, uh, you know, cool design. Um, very heavy. And so let me show you. So, yeah, the reason I wanted it, I love the design. I love the slipcase. But I wanted to get this checklist book that comes with it. You can only get this as part of this set. Um, so, yeah, it's a checklist. It literally, it, you know... It says it's a comprehensive list of everything he's ever done and published. Um, so, starting in 1953, his first published book, uh, Black Magic, number three. Um, and then going all the way through every year, right? And then this is literally broken up by year. And, yeah, and the beautiful thing is, as much art as is in that huge book... And then, well, we got to fill up this pa these pages with more artwork. So, yeah, more covers, more artwork, panels, uh, splash pages. There's a lot of cool things in here. Um, this is a fantastic book. Um, so, the checklist, yeah, just this will be helpful for anybody. We want to just see his output. What year did he have more work? Uh, also, of course, you want to track down certain things. You know, hey, let's see what, you know, check out different books he's done. Maybe there's things you compare it to your list. Maybe there's some you're missing. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, I have all the amazing Spider-Man, but I'm missing a, a journey into mystery. <laughs> um, this is really nice, too. So you got covers of the comics he drew, but you also got the splash pages for the stories, right? Sometimes these amazing fantasies would have, what, five or six, seven stories from him? So that each story has its own little title page. So these are really cool. I mean, this is like, it's almost like a second cover. Um... He does great splash pages, you know. It, again, it's just like a, it's like another cover for a book, but it's just for that story. Um, this is f interesting. So, in the the main book, they have like half of the half of these pages in here, the Amazing Fantasy fifteen, and then here in the checklist they have almost the other half. Um, but there's still two pages missing that they didn't reproduce. Um, I mean the pages they are up, you know, they're in the they're in the uh, Smithsonian, so they're not lost or anything, but. Um, yeah, it's like literally this is a good supplemental book to the main book. Man, yeah, I can just I always just love looking at the original art, uh, Amazing Fantasy 15. I mean, like this is where Spider-Man started, right? This is 
probably this is Ditko's biggest success. And it's all just real simply laid out, very effective. It's moody, atmospheric. Um, it's only a 12 page story. Yeah, 11, page 11 and page 12. Spider Man started 12 pages. That was it. Um, you can see his 63. Wow, look at the 63 work. Oh, okay, 64. But yeah, big uptick in his uh, workload. Um, this is a reprint of an uh, uh, interview he did for a fanzine. Uh, let's see, what is it called? Uh, Comic Heroes of the Future, number 6, 1964, by Don Schenk. Um, and it's, a, yeah, an interview. I guess the, I guess these uh, young kids or whatever, teenagers doing these zines, maybe young college people, they would set up uh, interviews, you know. This, I really like this. I think I've, I may have read this interview before, because I have a book that reprints a ton of his uh, zine interviews. But the question here, uh, room read the last one here. How do you feel about a fanzine editor, editor asking you a lot of questions? And Dicko responds, "It's better than nobody asking any questions." I happen to be, I happen to be interested in anything that pertains to comics and enjoy fanzines very much. But when I read this the other day, it's like it's better than nobody asking any questions. You know, Dicko's known for um, over the decades writing probably hundreds of letters back to fans. You know, he's, he's not someone who'd answer the phone or wouldn't like answering the phone and talking to people or necessarily opening the door and bringing them into the studio or certainly didn't do public appearances, conventions and such. But uh, writing, reading and writing letters was definitely his uh, preferred mode of communication. So, right, it's better than nobody, ask, than nobody asking any questions. So... I guess he'd always respond. At least people, you know, he'll respond to your questions or comments. Um, here's some more of these beautiful Crime Master Spider-Man pages. Um, but again, the very useful checklist. Uh, here's a, here's a, like a pencil drawing. I think it was for a zine or a pinup. A Doctor Strange pinup. It looks like it's not completed or almost partially completed. But, oh, here's a nice little gem. Um, his pencils for a story, a Spider-Man story, before he inks it. Again, these might have been reprinted in other places. I think I've seen some of his pages, pencil pages before. Um, but again, it's just a beautiful thing to have here in this beautiful, beautiful book. Uh, yeah, of course, the famous machinery lifting sequence of Spider-Man. You know, well, that's like a famous image right there. And yeah, more of the uh, Warren Wash work. And again, extensive checklist. Uh, boy, compiling this is a you know that's that's quite a quite a quite a job. So thank thank you guys for doing that. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, just more uh, information. Again, useful useful to help you compile your own collection look for things you're missing or just you know just assess how much work he's done and which are the leaner years and which are the years where he had a lot more work uh a return stint to marvel in the 80s he would do pretty much any book i guess but spider-man or doctor strange he never drew those characters again for a comic once he left them in the mid 60s um the missing man which i think just showed up in uh the Rocketeer comic, if I remember. And from what we read, I think, yeah, I believe, yeah, Dicko wrote something that he does not know how this comic, how this story ended up being published. You know, against his wishes, I guess, in at least that, that, at that time. So that's that's an interesting little factoid. Um, I remember buying the ROM comic from Marvel in the what, early 80s. Um, late 70s, early 80s. And then there'd be a couple issues or different books he would do where he's asked to draw a whole bunch of Marvel superheroes. Everybody's there but <laughs> Doctor Strange or Spider-Man. Um, it's cool seeing his Iron Man because he did des he did design that, that version of the suit. The original version that Jack Kirby did, that big bulky 
almost 1950s looking big the gray one then the gold one and then in a few issues later they had Dicko come in and streamline it and you know yeah they've changed it over the years obviously but that, that, that that's where that look started the slim down trim down iron man uh, suit um yeah this is one of these really weird side projects uh the crackling the crackling blazer i can't get over that name um sounds like a drug reference the crackling blazer but i think it was done it was done for a cb magazine right cb radio um it was supposed to be a comic strip for some magazine and then i understand that it never came through but um robin snyder actually printed uh i think a story and like a, a lot of the um conceptual art in one of the one of the publications they released in the last several years um so that was a really awesome treat but um again just so much great work to be seen here into yeah into the 90s i mean look at look at the dates 90s we started looking at stuff in the 50s so this man had a 65 plus around 65 year career which is stunning and literally he worked till the end i mean he was 90 when he passed away and he had spent his 80s doing these 32 page comics so um yeah this is nice uh this is from the, the mocker um i gotta sh so this is how the page goes right of course you can't see it all in the camera but so they printed it sideways uh so you could see it they could so you could fill up the they could fill up the page so you get the art as big as you possibly as you can but yeah the mocker this is one of those 80s books he's did I mean, look, I don't know how many panels there are here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, for fifteen. Some of them, I've seen some. I think twenty, twenty plus pages, twenty plus panels on a on a page. Crazy, crazy. I love it. Uh, yeah, look at the output again. Two thousand one, two thousand two, two thousand five, two thousand six. Yeah, and then even the reprints. Right, Marvel is always reprinting their old stuff. Uh, Marvel Masterworks. Atlas Era, Tales of Suspense, Volume 1. Marvel Monsters, some of the old monster stories he did. Spider-Man, Black and Blue and Red. I don't know what that is, but they reprinted some... Sp I mean, the way I understand it, you know, comic creators, they always get a royalty check whenever, the you know, say Marvel or DC, this is how it's supposed to work, whenever they reprint anything they've ever done uh, in, a, in a collection, and even just a short story... I mean, so that's not that's not bad, right? All that work you did in the past. Um, I mean, some of that work for certain companies under whatever contract, you, you get a little bit of money for that, for the reprint of that. And think of something like Spider-Man, how many times continuously that's been reprinted over the last 50, 60 years. You know, the original Dicko stuff. So, um, and yeah, here we go. Just, the, yeah, these are the more modern stuff, the 32 series. Um a lot of these were funded by Kickstarter, so as a Kickstarter backer, your name, so my name and many of many other fans, my name is listed in all these current books in the in the contributor page, which is great. You know, I trip out when I see that, like, wow. You know, if you knew if you knew as a ten year old boy that you'd be in a credited in Steve Dicko books as a backer, it'd be, it'd be amazing. Um, and this is cool too. This makes sense. They're photographs of the exhibit. Uh, the exhibit took place, what I say, uh, 2016, 2017. Um, yeah, it looks like the opening night. Uh, the people there checking out. Yeah, so there's a lot of the original art that's in these books. Um, videos and, uh, yeah, a lot of this Dicko uh, lettering from Mr. A stories. looks like lies, corruption, force, murder. Uh, yeah, so that's it. That is a quick look through two um, beautiful, beautiful, stunning uh, work here. So, yeah, again, such a great idea. This big Mr. A <laughs> black and white uh, slipcase. I'm going to put them both in here. Again, um, I just bought this this week, earlier this week. Um, IDW is down in San Diego. I'm in LA, so it did not take long to get to my place. It's very heavy. 
very heavy as um you can tell oh, you know believe take, take my word for it and also i've been hearing from people online from uh hong kong and uh i think england like they were thinking of getting the book but the price the shipping is like 120 bucks 140 50 more than what the book cost but you know shipping that's just how shipping is nowadays it's i don't think it's the companies are trying to you know put a put a bunch of extra money on top of the shipping costs it's very expensive and it shoots up like crazy on foreign um foreign travel anyway so here's the original dicko unleashed i'm not gonna look through it. it's the same book but yeah the cover was different and this is what i had um so now that i have you know this new one i'm very happy to sell this at a extremely ridiculous low low price um has a little damage that it fell one time i'll just show it right here because i didn't although I, yeah see it's a little loose here but i mean the pages are still attached so if you're looking for an economical ver uh edition economical price because the are i think even this one is still available i think it's like 80 or 90. <laughs> i sound like a home shopping club commercial here i'm just letting you know in case you want one and you know you don't want to spend too much uh message me about this see how long this last but um i think that's it um let me just share really quick yeah if you're new to the channel i'm a comic book creator um been doing comics 23 years i self-publish all my work um my main character is this character called el muerto which i did this new graphic novel in uh 2017 um and i'm working on the second one and more plan and i've done other comics over the years and such but um you can find my links here on the youtube underneath this youtube video um i'll also put a link for the um may as well put it up for the idw store i, I don't own stock in the company i'm not i don't get anything out of this i don't even get like a finder's fee it's not, i just put it out there because i was just surprised when i realized that that book was available still or again i don't know what it is it's the first edition I, i'm thinking i'm again maybe they're out of stock and these are the stock that came back from spain from the gallery i don't know i don't know what the story is but i got my i got one so um one last thing another thing um i have a previous dicko video i'll put the link below uh or i think the link will be here in this video somewhere um talking about steve dicko's work um and then this summer um in johnstown pennsylvania steve dicko's actual birthplace um, there's going to be this two month exhibit dedicated to him, a hometown heroes, Steve Dicko exhibit from July 15th through September 11th. And it's going to be at this place called the bottle works. So I guess it's like a, what do you call it? An art district, right? So it's like a whole strip of, um, probably galleries and maybe art studios and yeah, probably like restaurants and bars, whatever. Um, so they're going to, it's like a big old block party. So it's going to be a two month, there's going to be a, an exhibit on Steve Dicko. Uh, and because it's his hometown, the family's there, they're assisting and such. So there's going to be a lot of artwork in the show. And, you know, I I'm guessing like maybe, I'm not saying his, his art desk is going to be there or his childhood drawing tools. But you never know, right? I mean, what's going to, what, I, I don't know. I don't have information on that. But um, And there's going to be all kinds of events. Um, I'll put a link again below this video to the website for that. Um, yeah, it's going to be the Dicko event of the century or last century. Um, so I'm making plans to go there myself. Um, and I'll probably talk about that more in another video, but, um, I'm doing, I'm going to do a new, um, this is a zine I did, a you don't know just Dicko, uh, a zine on Steve Dicko, just kind of like a primer for people not as familiar with the man's work. Um, so I plan to have this over there and I'm actually going to do an updated edition um you know a lot more new content i'm um, thinking of doing that at a bigger size um but yeah adding a lot more stuff in it which i'll talk about later um a couple of interviews with people and um some more articles and more artwork so anyway um if you don't know dicko you will if you read the dicko unleashed book and go to this um hometown heroes exhibit in johnstown pennsylvania july july 15th through september 11th 2021 so hopefully i'll see you there but hopefully i'll see you on the next episode of los comics tv thank you everybody